The Justice Secretary is planning a Texas-style scheme, we're told, which would see criminals being put to work in local communities by cleaning graffiti and planting trees. Low-level offenders would be able to avoid going to prison by cleaning up their local neighborhoods instead. It's hoped that the plan will help to tackle the worryingly full prison population. Danny, what do you think? I, I think it's a great idea that the, the humorous juxtaposition of cleaning graffitis on one day and planting trees on the second day, it, it's really quite humorous. Uh, I, don't, I don't object to a bit of public humiliation when it comes to criminals and, and airing their dirty laundry in public. That, you know, they're criminals that have been convicted of low-level crimes. I, I guess it would be more helpful to understand what low-level crimes where that stops and where that starts. But I don't have any problems with high-vis jackets um, and not quite a chain gang, but being told and chaperoned and told what to do and the public seeing what they're doing. And, and it, We've got this, this picture from, from, I think, Texas, which is the, where Sheriff Arpaio said, we will give the public what they want. So they are chained together. They wear striped trousers and pink T-shirts. Marina, what about that? It just shows that the Conservatives have got absolutely no new ideas. They have to look to Texas from decades ago. Um, right. I don't think we should have ever been putting in prison people who, have, uh, who are not a threat to the public, who are not violent, who have committed um, non-serious crimes. And by that, I mean like drugs offences, people in possession of drugs like cannabis, for example, which I think should be uh, decriminalised. Dealing drugs? I think there's, I think it, again, it depends on the class of drug, but I think there are so many offences where people are in prison and they, they should not be like, if, like shoplifting offences. Also, this is just nonsense. Just, just consider this policy that we're hearing, which we, is going to free up around 2,600 places, which in the grand scheme of things, according to the Ministry of Justice, the prison population is growing by 100 up to 200 per week. So this is going to do absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things. It is a soundbite. And I think it was, what, about a month ago that Suella Bravman said that she was going to criminalise laughing gas. So if you are caught selling laughing gas, you get up to 14 years. So there's, just, there's no joined up thinking here at all. This is purely a knee jerk reaction to the fact that last week we learnt that rapists are going free because there is no space in our prisons, which by the way, Rishi Sunak knew about three years ago when he was Chancellor Danny, of the Exchequer, I... when he was Chancellor <laughs> of the Exchequer and he received criticism because he did not supply the funding needed to, to give those extra places to prisons, which by the way, Boris Johnson promised 10,000 extra prison okay. places, and I think he contracted Go on, out Danny, the same, go on, the same company as Look, the 40 I, new hospitals. I, I know you're not a fan of, of the Conservatives. I, I don't think there's a problem of, of learning from other people about how they do things. I don't think... Of course not. Uh, well, course well not. the Conservatives have just learned that in Texas they, they manage things differently and maybe they get results in Texas. Uh, if you go to prison nowadays, over the years I've interviewed so many prisoners and ex-cons, and you go to prison as a car thief in London, and you get out of prison and you've got connections in the northwest with the Mr Big of Liverpool and mm. all of a sudden you're running drugs up and down. It's an academy for crime yeah, since yeah, prison. Yeah, agree. And, and well, also, they don't have prisons at all then. I mean, that's the extension of that is the prisons don't work at all. Well, well that, that is the, the reality for some people. Pris, prisons do not so, work. So put, so we're so put prisoners... There. Well, we're, we're in agreement to an extent that prisons may not work. Where we disagree is, is, is the assumption that we're talking about people who smoke pot. Mm. or maybe people who deal pot. I, I, I said I'd like to know where the, the boundaries are for low level. If it's someone like a car thief, for example, or someone who kicks in a front door as someone sleeping at three in the morning mm -hmm. and ransacks the, the house, then I think that that is, 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 is something that needs to be dealt with very harshly. It definitely is a, 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 okay. a, a But I think we're what we're talking about here is not community service in the old fashioned sense. It's taking people who would otherwise be going to prison mm -hmm. and making them work instead. And maybe if you want to make them dress, wear pink, you can. I, so you would end up with people who are let's say someone who's done multiple burglaries instead of being jailed would be out tidying car parks. No, I don't think... I think people who commit multiple burglaries should be in jail. I think that's a serious crime. That is... That to me, that's crazy. Like, if someone burgled my house, my, you know, I'm inside, my children are inside, that's a, that's a serious crime. You We're don't get about, jail for the first about, offence of that. And and that shows and that to me is wrong. But again, we're going back to the the, the, the government we've had in charge for thirteen years, who was supposed to be tough on crime, and yet because of cuts to police, the courts, the, you know, the judicial system, everything, we now got people going for. Well, yeah, we, we got the, the prisons are fuller than ever. They must be being somebody must be t tough on somebody. Nick in Devon, hi. Oh, hello, Jeremy. What do you think about this? Put them to work. Um, 
Yes, I, I definitely do. I, I, I think it's sort of uh, um, something that we, we underuse, quite frankly, in this country. And um, uh, this whole sort of uh, punitive idea about locking everybody up and giving everybody longer prison sentences somehow sort of solves things is just not true. It doesn't work, and we all know it doesn't work. It's certainly in some Scandinavian countries, for instance, they have things like weekend pr- uh, prisons, which allow like uh, people people that are low-level crimes who have committed offences to sort of carry on working and support their families. I mean... Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, you know, how does, that, how does that act as a deterrent? They, they gave that sort of sentence to Jeffrey Epstein and he kept offending. Uh, well, you know, I mean, you know, you're taking an example yeah. of what I would consider to be quite extreme. It does work, actually. I mean, you stop them from going out to their houses at night. Uh, you make them go to prison at weekends. That's just one thing. But, I mean, community payback is something that works very well in the community. I have had some sort of experience of when these things have been used in different things. Like, for instance, councils at the moment are crying out, um, trying to sort of... Uh, cope with all the different things they are responsible for. Community payback can help them tremendously. All right, um, Nick, thank you very much. Sally in Dorset, hi. Oh, hello. What do you I, think, Sally? Well, I like the idea of um, community service work very much. I think it's brilliant. But, and there's a big but, after uh, whoever the organisation or employer is that asks that they'll have community service people, after they've finished their sentence, they should be offered to go uh, be a proper employee on the payroll. And nobody ever wants somebody to be a real employee. They want the free work. They want the community service free work, but they don't want to put them on the payroll afterwards. I see. But they, and, but and they might not want to be on the payroll. criminals often need. Yeah. They need an act your job because nobody wants to employ them. Is that right, Lisa? do you think, Danny? Well, well, actually, she's she's not correct. Uh, there are employers out there who actively hire people who are ex-cons and they actually go into prisons when they're in the final weeks and months of their sentence. For example, Timpsons, mm. the, the, tea, yeah. the, the tea cutting. The key cutting. Key cutting, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's too many strong cups of tea. <laughs> uh, the key cutting people, they, they don't exclusively hire ex-cons or cons, but, the, but they're great at trying to give people a second chance. But the lady's correct in principle. Generally speaking, if you go and... Uh, if someone came to me for a job and they, they had a rap sheet, as the Americans call it, that would make me think about things. Would well, you, think you would give them a job or you wouldn't? It, it, would, depend, it would depend on their crime, I suppose, mm. you know. Yeah, stealing you know, cars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Could be a good supply. Yeah, well, they would. They might. They would know what they're doing.